You probably already know normal line breaks breakpoints in Chrome or other debuggers, which are great if you already have an idea where your code is. But if you are not very familiar with the code base or you're trying to understand a new technology, Chrome also has some other advanced breakpoint features. They're not based on a certain line number, but instead on an action that happens on the page. I'm going to go through these advanced breakpoint features, and I'm going to use the backbone to do of MVC app for that. To do MVC is a simple to do app that's written in lots of different frameworks, so you can compare the differences between them. I'm going to go through the backbone version and use breakpoints to understand how it works. So when I click here, this item disappears. To debug this, I can use something called an event listener breakpoint. An event listener breakpoint basically pauses execution as soon as I uh, click on anything. So as soon as I click on this button, it means Chrome is going to pause execution and I can have a look at what's happening. So I'm going to open the debugger and inspect uh, sources, enter the sources tab and now go to event listener breakpoints. So in here I want a mouse event and it's a click. So now hopefully next time I click here, um, it's going to pause execution and kind of show me what code is running. So you can now see jQuery is handling this click event. I could kind of keep stepping into it to f until I find my own code, but instead I'm going to use a feature called blackboxing. So that is a way of telling Chrome that I'm not interested in this particular script um, and it should just ignore it. Um, so continue running, I have to click again. And this time you can see there's two stack frames are hidden and jQuery is skipped over and the Chrome debugger goes straight into the application code. So in here you can see um, that this to-do view, which is each one of these to-dos, uh, has a model. And if I destroy this model, this is essentially the only thing that happens in here. And obviously something else then continues to happen to kind of re-render the application with the new state. Another thing I would like to understand is how I can mark items as completed. So if I click here, you can see the strike through changes. Um, I can do the same thing as before with the event listener breakpoint. And that tells me, okay, what, what happens? What is the event handler? And then if I step into that, I can see, okay, the completed value of this model changes. Um, but what I'm more interested in right now is how does it re-render? And if I look at the HTML code for it in the elements panel, um, and I collapse this one. Um, now when I toggle it, you can see that the class actually changes. So if it's not there, the class attribute is empty. If I add the class, uh, if I mark the item is done, the class changes to completed. So in order to see what's making this code change, I can use something called a DOM breakpoint. So if I right click on this element and go into break on and attribute modification, and then Chrome is going to to um, pause execution every time an attribute of this element changes. So in this case, that's a class attribute because we add and remove the completed class. So now if I mark it as, as completed, uh, you can see it's going to step into jQuery again. Uh, you know it's black box, um, but because we are calling jQuery rather than jQuery calling our code, we can actually go back up in the stack trace and that's fine. Um, so you can see that essentially in the to do view render method, um, the way our code or app decides whether or not to apply the completed class is based on whether or not the model has been marked as completed. So if we look at the model, it has these attributes and one of them is completed and the other is like the title of the attribute. So let's continue running this. So that allows us to find a lot of the code nicely. Now let's try to understand how this filter works. So every time this filter changes, you can see it lets us filter our to-dos. Um, and I want to see what happens when I click on it. So I'm going to use um, another breakpoint, another mouse click breakpoint. Um, but you're gonna notice nothing actually happens in this case. Actually what happens when I click on this is that URL changes and then our app reacts to this URL change. So how can we find out what code is rendering this? Well, one thing we can do is use a DOM breakpoint, right? Because we can see here, um, it has this class equal selected. So we could just add a DOM breakpoint here and, and when this class changes, then we want to break. 
But actually, if you click around, you can see that actually it's rendering the whole section down here. So rather than replacing, changing the class attribute, what it does it is it just replies the entire element. So our DOM breakpoint isn't going to work. So what can we do in this case? One thing that's possible in like a small application like this is to just break on the next uh, bit of JavaScript code. So now if I click on active, you can see um, the next bit of code it runs, which is kind of based on this uh, URL change in the backbone. So it's like a function called check URL. And um, that's going, is where it's going to break. That's not our code, so that's black box script as well. And there's also another bit of code if you want to black box. It's underscore, which is also just more library code. Um, so now let's try again. Um, oh, we need to do this. And then we click on active. And you can see now it ignores all the uh, backbone code and underscore code and goes straight into our router. Um, so apparently the way this works is that you have this filter attribute in the URL and it gets passed into the set filter function. Um, and then uh, it's applied to uh, the app to two filter value. This works fine for small applications, but if you have anything like timers running in the background or Ajax requests being going on in the background or mouse move handlers, then you will pause before you actually reach this place where you want to click. So another thing we could have figured this out is by looking at our app view. Uh, so let's look in the navigator to find this uh, thing. Um, and in here we can see the app view. Let's find something relating to the filter. You can see here the selected class is applied based on app.todo filter. So if now you're wondering how is this app.todo filter being set, you can use um, a snippet that breaks whenever this value on this object changes. Port Irish has a bunch of um, snippets uh, on this repo. And the one we're interesting is, interested in is called debug access. Um, so what this does is basically is a breakpoint for an object property change. So let's paste this in the console so we've access to it. And now we want to debug access to a property. So the property we're interested in is app uh, to do filter. Um, that's based on app dot to do filter in there here. And now hopefully when this changes, uh, we don't need to click here anymore. Uh, it's still going to break in the right place. Um, so you can see here, um, it breaks inside our little snippet that we posted, pasted in the command line. Um, and then if you go out back up uh, in the stack trace, uh, you can see this is where it's being set. And basically we have found the same router as we did before with the breaking. Okay. So let's get rid of the uh, breakpoints, remove all the breakpoints here and also reload the page so it forgets this debug access. One thing you can notice uh, when you reload the page is that the app has retained the to-do items. So that shows it's, kind of, it's being stored locally and persisted across page loads. Um, and we can see how that is done in the resources if we look at local storage. Uh, you see there's like to-do's backbone. Um, items in there. Um, and those are the ones that kind of persisted across the page reloads. So suppose we want to find out how the state is persisted. Um, to do that, we can use a different thing called capture calls. We just show to the call stack whenever a function is being called. Um, and in this case, the function that we're interested in is local storage of set item. So let's go into the code in here, uh, get the raw version. Um, and paste it into our console. We want to find out when there are calls to local storage dot set item. So we pass in the parameters what we're interested in, and now let that a new item. Um, you can see in the console now uh, it logs all the places where this code is being called. Um, so the original thing that kind of uh, causes this is our event handler here. So this is in the app view, and when you press enter on the, in this text box, then uh, we create this new to-do item. Um, but it's interesting what happens then after that. So you can see that creating this new to-do item, first of all, puts it into the backbone storage, but then also there's a plugin called backbone local storage, which is going to persist the new item to local storage. And it's going to do the same thing. If we click here, um, it will delete our item from local storage. Um, and if you wanted to, you could relatively easily 
um, adjust this snippet we pasted here for tracing calls um, to break when you reach such a function call.